in the heart of East Africa lies a river that sustains an entire ecosystem. A river that has shaped the land and nurtured its wildlife for centuries. The Mara River. Flowing across the border between Kenya and Tanzania, it is the lifeblood of the renowned Mara Serengeti ecosystem. Now, this precious resource is under threat and its survival depends on the actions of those who depend on it. From the soaring giraffes browsing the acacia trees to the massive herds of the wildebeest embarking on their epic migration, the Mara River is more than a source of water. Kenya takes pride in being home to world's eighth wonder, which is the crossing of the wildebeest from Kenya's Masai Mara to Tanzania's Serengeti. But just how much effort goes into the preservation and conservation of the Mara River, which is the main source of livelihood and the heartbeat of these regions flora and fauna. With changing landscapes and increasing pressure from human activity, the Mara River is facing its biggest challenge yet. Uh, the greater Mara ecosystem is known to actually host one of the biggest concentrations of large mammals in the world. So land use change according to me is the biggest threat in the Mara. It's affecting the Mara quality and the Mara's uh, the flow regimes. In Kenya's highlands, a new movement is taking root. One that bridges the gap between sustainable farming and conservation. Farmers in the Mao forest catchment area are turning to avocado cultivation, boosting tree cover while simultaneously boosting their income. It's a small but significant step in the right direction, helping to prevent soil erosion and water runoff that could jeopardize the health of the river below. The river's story is not without conflict. Farmers and pastoralists, both vital to the region's economy, are often at odds over water use. With droughts becoming more frequent and land pressure mounting, the fight for water is intensifying. What WWF Kenya is doing is to ensure that the communities who depend on the river for different uses come together and have an agreement uh, for example, uh, a water allocation plan where they have a system of sharing the water so that everybody has enough water. The Mara River is a shared resource flowing from Kenya into Tanzania and ultimately into Lake Victoria. As it flows, it carries with it the hopes of two nations. For Tanzania, downstream from the river, the stakes are high. It is very important for the Tanzania to be proactive to just discuss with the Kenya side because the Kenya side is the one who uh, starts to use the water. If they use all the water upstream, then the main effect it will be on downstream, the Tanzania side. In an effort to bridge the gap between countries and communities, local stakeholders have created joint forums for water resource management. <laughs> These forums brings together 14 water resource users associations known as RUAS from Kenya and 12 from Tanzania, a united front determined to protect the river that sustains them all. The second Wednesday of every month, we'll come to the, we shall come to the river and we try to collect the, the, the insects inside that water. And uh, there are specific insects that will lead us to conclude the quality of the water in the river. When we find the lysis and the red worms, then we conclude that the river or the water in the river is not clean. The Mara River is also an economic engine. More than $10 million are generated annually through tourism as the river plays a central role in the migration of millions of wildebeest, zebras and other wildlife. This incredible spectacle is a major draw for tourists from around the world. The collaboration is very important, especially for the Mara River, because the Mara River is saving um, as economy of the two countries. So the economy of Kenya, the economy of Tanzania, more than 10 million is generated from the uh, tourism. So, and uh, these um, national parks are transboundary. So if we don't collaborate, then the effect will be very high. So collaboration is very important because we are 
going to generate or to gain more by collaborating. Over the years, the local communities have fought hard to protect the Mara River. When sand harvesting was found to be damaging the river's ecosystem, they took action, closing down the illegal sites and allowing the river to regenerate. Obviously, there was some resistance from the people because there was a lot of sand harvesting. Uh, but now we did a lot of lobbying, a lot of uh, community sensitization on how important this will be when you are c conserving this river. Just letting them understand that it is not about the conservancy, but also the community themselves. Now, efforts are focused on the reforestation of the river's catchment areas. Deforestation, once rampant, is being reversed, with tree planting initiatives and sustainable land practices taking root. We are discouraging deforestation. We are discouraging cutting down of trees in the conservancy and anywhere else that is protected. Because these are the envi this is the environment, we need to increase tree cover to help us uh, get rainfall that is very paramount, a uh, substitute to uh, the rivers here. Now, efforts are focused on the restoration of the river's catchment areas. Deforestation, once rampant, is being reversed with tree planting initiatives and sustainable land practices taking root. This work is essential if the Mara River is to continue flowing and supporting both wildlife and human life. The future of the Mara River and the incredible biodiversity it supports depends on cooperation between Kenya and Tanzania, pastoralists, farmers and conservationists, as well as governments and local communities. The Mara River is not just a river, it's a pulse of life in the spectacular ecosystem. Its waters feed not only the land, but the hopes of millions, humans and animals. For Voice of Nature from Mara Siena Conservancy in the Mara ecosystem, I'm David Kagina.